Can you see the opposite? I'm going to, first of all, give you each a key quote. We filmed Sabrina Broadbent, an experienced English teacher at Hornsey School for Girls, demonstrating some innovative methods of teaching Shakespeare in the classroom. With the help of John Yandell, a lecturer at the Institute of Education, we showed the programme to a group of newly qualified teachers to see what they made of it. This time, I want you to whisper your quote as if it is a terrible secret. Very good. OK, let's stop it there. What I'd like you to do is, in pairs or threes, to think about, to talk to each other about the strategies that you've seen Sabrina use to make a complex text accessible to the students she's teaching, OK? Enough to talk about? I thought it was interesting at the beginning how she got them to own the quotation and, and use the language yeah, and that. shout it, whisper it. And they end up enjoying their lessons a lot more yeah. as opposed oh, to this because dry... Because they have more ownership. Yeah. yeah. That's it. So yeah. This is what we saw in the film here, isn't it? It's putting the onus on the student. It, yeah. it was using a lot more of the thinking skills, you know, and the exactly. strategies of you know, that kinesthetic learning. Absolutely. I was thinking, yeah. trying to compare that to my... Year nine boys, and I don't know, I don't know how much they would be able to pick up immediately as quickly as that. Mm. You know, this is, must be banquet. That's though. fine. Don't don't feel you've got to say, experienced teacher, she must be right. I mean, there are aspects of her practice that are totally legitimate for you. To... Okay. So, what was Sabrina doing? What was going on there? It got them focused straight away without them really realizing that they were focusing on the pure words. There was no barrier. They weren't being, they didn't realize that it was Shakespeare and therefore it was meant to be hard, um, which could have made some of them switch off. And without the children actually realizing that, they were already getting right down to the basics of how you actually speak and how you actually say it to convey the Absolutely. meaning. Absolutely. So you've got there the, the key central fact that this is a performance script. Up, and there it is with Year 9 students grappling with it. Lastly, I want you to swing round and shout your quote out as if you are suddenly terrified. I think we felt that it gave the children confidence to be able to shout um, in Shakespearean language. And they said it so many times in the end that that's a quotation now they've learnt. Absolutely. They've done something which is, in a way, kind of very basic, very old-fashioned exam preparation. You learn some quotes. But they've done it in a way that is valuable, is enjoyable, and is performance orientated. At Key Stage 3, I was able to teach really interestingly and very interesting things. I'm now in a situation where, with my year 10s, I take far less risks with uh, group dynamics and, um, you know, with the sort of varied approaches. And I, actually, that's pointless because. Um, they get bored, you know, and if people are bored, um, then there's not very much going on in their head except a great desire for the lesson to end. When you start saying the quotes over and over again in different ways as well, it sticks in your head and your, your brain starts processing it and trying to, like, you're trying to understand what it means as well as putting it in your head. Stop. Fantastic. Well done. All right, sit down. If you think your quote was spoken by one of the witches, I would like you to go into the back of the room over there by the door. A witch, Macbeth or Banquo. What about this business of moving them to different parts of the room, moving the students to different parts of the room? What's that for? Why not just keep them in their seats? The people aren't sure. They've got to move somewhere. Mm. And it gets them all up and moving rather than sitting there going, oh, my, I don't really know. And it came down to, as you're saying, zooming in, they end the one word, Macbeth equals murder. Yeah. You know, and that was how they, they, they worked it out. And the whole business of, well, murder, who's that associated with? Yeah. That's a teaching from Sabrina. Yeah. But partly because of her way of being in the classroom, she can sort of smuggle the direct teaching in 
almost without one being aware that it's happening. Yeah. We did actually raise yeah. the point that um, she had sent groups of people in their different characters to different corners of the room and she was focusing on one group and we did all make the point, well, what were the other kids doing <laughs> at that time? <laughs> Why were they so silent? Yeah. Oh, that's a tricky one. It kind of means whatever. Do you think it could be Macbeth? I think Macbeth's a very whatever kind of... What you've drawn attention to, though, is the fact that there's a history, a relationship built up between the teacher and a class over a long period of time. And the... What came across, though, it would be very different for, say, someone like you know, NQTs who are starting out and possibly trying new things that you've learned. And you might be having people say, oh, well, I wouldn't try, but you've, you've got to so that they're used to, you know, working in different ways. It, it got me thinking about my own and our own Year 9 lessons, Macbeth lessons, which are very dry, really. And at the moment, my Year 9 lessons are all about just sit down, stay sitting down. Right now, I'm, we're doing this quiz on the board. Maybe if we did try out something like that, then maybe the kids wouldn't be coming in ten minutes late, dragging their bags, and maybe sort of year nine, year nine sat study would be sort of a more enjoyable experience for us all. So it certainly motivated all of us to give it a pop. I suppose there's one other thing in terms of sorting out the quotes. She she translates one of the quotes as whatever, and then says, Macbeth, he's a whatever sort of bloke. What's going on there? It's more. It's more like a kind of a simile rather than the metaphor. Say, mm. it's just like in your lives mm. when you do this rather than this is saying this. Mm. It's comparing rather than saying it is. When we um, had to move around the classroom and choose um, who said which quote, um, I think it was good because usually teachers tell us where to stand or tell us what to, th not, to not to think, but what to do. But this time we got to think ourselves and just like use our brains, basically. <laughs> Would you like to come out here? You be Macbeth. Genevieve, would you like to be Banquo? Lee, a witch along with Elizabeth and Rama. She actually allows the rest of the class to direct so the, the scenes. They could be talking to each other as they're going past. They could be in like a freeze frame and then as soon as it's their turn they could just sort of unfreeze. But what she does really well is she prompts them. Like she says stop and she goes to them, OK, but how should Banquo's facial expression be? And then she takes it back to the class. Right the way throughout this <laughs> lesson, which could be conceptualised as rather tedious preparation for a very tedious exam, she is still seeing Macbeth as a, as a text whose meaning is realised in performance. It's not just the words on the page. And that means that the kids can get hold of the words on the page a lot better than if that was all that was being talked about in the lesson or written about in the lesson. Then you notice them. How far is it called to forest? When I was acting out, it helped the most because, like, um, not only was I getting, like, um, a criticism from the teacher, but I was getting it from the students as well. Who like um, who are just like me? So I kind of understood it better. When he says that he's going to be king, because that's like the most powerful thing you can be. You see the officers. To give the I'm going to set you off on a hunt to look for as many pairs of opposites or antitheses as you can find. Best that are greater than that. Yeah. Are you finding these in the book? <laughs> <laughs> Choral reading, I like it. It makes the point about punctuation better than any other way I can think of. Smothered in sunrise, and nothing is but what is not. Have you tried to include speaking yeah. in English? Yeah. 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 I mean, especially the text that's not straightforward for them. The kids that I've done it with, I mean, it's kind of got lost very quickly. You cannot get anyone reading with any feeling in a choral atmosphere. And in fact, in the lesson, she then went on and had to read the line again to put some feeling into it. And that was when the kids got the, what the effect the punctuation had, which they hadn't got before. So I, I, I don't know if I would use that. You could give them cards, three full stops, one comma, 
and an exclamation mark? Where do you put them? I don't think it's very much appropriate in this very lesson. Really? No, I don't, I don't but, what, but the punctuation in that actual speech is so important, and that was the point she was trying to make. OK, we're ready. What is it that's being achieved by getting the students in pairs to find opposites? Um, because they were in pairs working, you know, um, one girl said, oh, let me see what you've got, you know, and um, another girl came along and said, you know, here we are. And she said, oh, where did you get this? In from the book, you know. <laughs> and, you know, this is obviously what we're trying to bring into our classroom, that peer sharing and peer learning, you know, which is quite useful. Because they had looked for the opposites and played an active part and gave her the evidence, at least they would be more willing to accept them what she had to teach them directly. They had somewhere to put mm. that direct bit yeah. of teaching. And it's a kind of obvious point, but it is worth dwelling on. There is nothing wrong with it. It is necessary, even, at times, to tell kids stuff. Yeah? Mm -hmm. They're not going to find everything out about a text by themselves. It's a question of how you prepare for that. What about the bit of the Anthony Sher video at the end? What's the significance of that? It was getting a very personal reaction out of them. It wasn't something that was alien and nothing to do with them and they couldn't be bothered with it. Um, I mean, after all, we're sort of talking about teenagers who don't necessarily have a particularly long attention span and if it doesn't relate to them personally, then they could switch off. Uh, absolutely right. I want to pull out something. If you show one video of a Shakespeare play, then the danger is that that becomes the play. You show two and you're foregrounding precisely the issue of interpretation, which is where we started off with the different ways of reading the, the single lines. I think it's a real way of empowering them as readers of Shakespeare, because they are then able to say, well, I like that one, and I didn't like that one, and these are the reasons why. Just watching an experienced teacher really helps because you kind of think, what can I do with that and apply it to me as a person, me as a teacher? And um, the task that she did or the way she moves around in the room, it's made me think maybe actually be more focal and sometimes step back and let them do it. And the pace is fantastic. I think pace is something that I'm working on all the time and teachers are all the time. But her, the pace of her lesson was really, really good. But I guess it comes with experience. It comes with experience <laughs> and also it comes with the development of a relationship over a long period of time. Yeah. Because she, it didn't look like she was working that hard. No. Because of the, the, the history of her within the school and with that group. And that will come with, with time for you. Honest. I think the thing that most stuck in my head about Macbeth is the language because when I first started reading the play, I did not understand one thing and now, looking back, I actually remember quite a lot of the stuff. The one thing I remember from Macbeth is the beginning part because I remember how um, Macbeth and everybody came in laughing and joking and then suddenly when they saw the witches, the mood all changed. The one thing I remembered about Macbeth was his character, how sly he was. He actually plotted about murdering the king so that he could inherit all the good things. I don't think that it's necessarily important that it helps you pass your exam. I think the most important thing is um, enjoying language and liking reading Macbeth. I suppose every time you sort of take the time to reflect on teaching and learning and so on, I realise teaching is really hard <laughs> and learning is also very hard and that, um, you know, the more energy and the more uh, kind of pleasure you can put at the centre of it, the better it is for everybody, basically.